Hello again, everyone. On our Linode servers, we're going to have resources that we need to keep an eye on, things like disk usage, memory usage, and so on. And it's really important that we keep an eye on those things because that actually constitutes the health of our server overall. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys some ways that we can actually inspect the resources on our Linodes and make sure that everything is running in tip-top shape. So let's get started. So off camera, I've already set up a Linode that we're going to use for the purposes of today's video. I'm logged into it right now, and I actually used this to create a Kubernetes cluster, which is just one of the many examples that you can use your Linode for. But let's go ahead and get started and see how to actually check the resources that are available on our Linode. Now in no particular order, now in no particular order, I'm going to show you how to check all of the resources that you'll want to keep your eye on. And one example of that is storage. If you run df and then hyphen h, you'll see the disk usage of all of the volumes that you have mounted. The most important of which is going to be this one right here, which is a single forward slash. It's also known as the root of the file system or the root file system. And right here we see dev sda. That's basically the naming convention of the hard drive. The second hard drive would be sdb. The third would be sdc and so on. There's other naming variations as well, so you may or may not see SDA as the name, but whatever it's named, it's going to be mounted here. On my end, I can see that I am using 4.7 gigabytes, and this particular Linode has 70 gigabytes total available. So that means I am using about 7% of the free space here, as you can see. As you use your Linode, you definitely want to keep your eye on this because if the storage ever reaches 100%, well, obviously, you can't store anything else and your server will encounter problems. One of my favorite tools for taking a closer look at what in particular is using up storage is the tool ncdu. It's often not installed by default. So if I type which and then ncdu, we can see that it is not available on this Linode. So in the case of Debian and Ubuntu, I can install it with sudo apt install and cdu, which is pretty simple. And if you are using a distribution that is not Ubuntu or Debian, then you could just exchange apt for whatever the package manager happens to be on that distro. Now that it's installed, I can run ncdu just like that. I'll press enter. Now, depending on the size and usage of your volume, it can take quite a bit of time for NCDU to finish scanning your file system. In my case, I was actually in my home directory and I haven't really stored much, so there really wasn't much for it to scan through, so it was essentially immediate. But in the output here, you can use the up and down arrows to select a different item. If it's a folder, for example, I can highlight it and press enter. And then it shows me the disk usage of every directory underneath that directory. And then I could just keep drilling down and I can see individual components. I can go up here to the two dots, go back, you get the idea. Now I'm in my home directory, which may or may not be where you want to start the search from within NCDU. I recommend running NCDU like this. We'll run it with sudo because NCDU will not be able to scan anything it doesn't have permission to scan. And if it's being run as your local user, then it's not going to have very many, if any, permissions outside of your home directory. So sudo ncdu, I will add the dash x option. And what that does is it tells ncdu to not scan anything that is mounted, only the local file system. So if I had NFS storage or some other file system installed, and that was not what I was interested in when it comes to this particular search, then dash x will eliminate those from being scanned. And then I'm going to use a single forward slash as the target, the root file system basically. So I'll press enter. And since it's scanning the entire file system, it's going to take a moment, but it's already done. So now we can look at each individual directory in the root file system if we were curious what in particular is using up all the storage. In this case, the user directory here at the top is using the most. We also have the var directory. We can go into lib and then docker. I was basically running some containers on this Linode, so of course it's going to have quite a few things here, but you get the idea, and then you can press Q to quit out. 
There's other things that you could do with NCDU, but I will leave it up to you. It's a great tool to check the disk storage and what's using your storage on your Linode. Another important thing is memory. If we type free-m, we can see how much memory is actually available. And how memory is calculated and utilized in Linux can actually be a video of and by itself. But to keep it simple, the number that you actually care about is this one right here. So we have about 2.7 gigabytes of memory free on this Linode, so obviously it's really not being starved for memory at all. It has more than enough memory to spare. And here I have a line for swap, which is actually disabled in my case. And for those that don't know, if you set up Kubernetes, it's highly recommend that you turn off swap because Kubernetes doesn't actually utilize swap, which is what I've done, but you might see swap on your end and you will see how much swap is being used here. So when your memory actually starts to fill up, then swap is going to be used in place of memory, but any swap memory that's being used is going to be orders of magnitude slower than RAM. So you definitely want to avoid that if you can. If swap is being overly used, that's a problem. In that case, you're probably gonna to wanna to know what in particular is using up all of your memory. More on that in a moment. Now let's sidetrack a bit to talk about CPU usage, specifically the load average. And there's several different ways that we can view the load average, one of which is to execute the uptime command, which is primarily used to see how long the server has been online. And mine hasn't been online for very long. I just created it earlier today. It's only been up for an hour and 26 minutes. Some servers will be up months or even years. But as useful as it might be to find out how long our server has been running, that's not why we ran this command. We wanted to see the load average, and we can see that right here. And essentially, the load average has three numbers, and each number shows you the load average over a period of time. And the periods are 1 minute, 5 minutes, and 15 minutes. So here we see 0.32 as the usage over the last minute, 0 0.40, as the usage over the last five minutes, and 0.36 is the usage over the past 15 minutes. It can be kind of confusing and hard to explain how to know when a specific number when it comes to load average is cause for concern. But the way that I like to explain it is to look at how many cores your CPU has, and if the load average is equal to the number of cores, then the server is being 100% utilized. Now, of course, load average is more complicated than that, but if you actually take the first digit here and compare it to the number of cores, that'll give you a general idea. And that goes for this number as well, as well as this one. So if the usage in any of these three numbers is over the number of cores you have, that's cause for concern. But what I like to do is utilize HTOP. And that helps me monitor both memory and CPU as well. And it's one of my favorite tools. So if I type which HTOP, it actually is installed. It may or may not be installed on your end. But if you do want to install it and it's not already, at least in the case of Debian and Ubuntu, it's as simple as sudo apt install and then the package name, which is htop. And if you are running on a different distribution, then change apt to whatever the package manager happens to be. And of course, make sure that you're following the proper syntax. And then when we launch htop, we can see what the CPU usage is, as well as the memory usage and swap usage. And then at the bottom, we see all of the individual processes that are running. I actually have two CPUs on this particular Linode. We can see the usage of both of them up here. So in this case, if the load average is over two for the first digit, that's a potential problem. But as long as it stays below two, we're generally fine. Now here you can actually use the up and down arrow to scroll through the list of processes and because I have the font size so high, you're not really able to see very much here. But on your end, you'll probably see more information and you can actually use your mouse as well to click on a particular category here and sort accordingly, which is great because maybe you want to sort by the CPU usage, sort by the memory usage and things like that. You could definitely do that with HTOP. So if it's not already installed on your Linode, I highly recommend that you install it. So I've shown you several ways that you can check the resource usage on your Linode. You can check your memory, your CPU, as well as how much storage is being utilized. And with that in mind, you'll be able to keep an eye on your Linode to make sure that it's not being overwhelmed. When it comes to Linux, there's all kinds of different commands and utilities that you can use to watch and monitor performance. I've just showed you my favorite ones. There's definitely other ways that you could do the same thing. 
But as long as you keep an eye on your resources, it doesn't really matter what tools you use to do so, so long as you actually do keep an eye on your resources. So there you go. You just saw some examples for how to check the resource usage on your Linode servers. I hope that was helpful. Make sure you click that like button because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. And also hit that subscribe button as well because there's some great content coming and you're going to love it. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you again real soon.